Yo, what even is this election cycle anymore? I mean, this is absolutely insane. And for both sides of the aisle, I understand it's customary that you would normally get presidents from years gone by to come out and hit the campaign trail. And while there is a lack of Republican representation, and in fact, they'll only show up on the uniparty side of things, which should kind of let people know exactly what's going on here, who's the outsider and who's the one that the deep state is rooting for. But of course... That's obvious to everybody in the know. If you're just coming to these conclusions now in 2024, like a lot of people regrettably are, I mean, where have you been over the past 8, 10, 12, 16, 20, 20? Anyways, just comparing the two strategies, right? Because after Kamala got absolutely dog walked on Fox News, he took a day off. Okay, she took a day off and had Eminem introduce Barack Obama to do her campaigning for her. She also had Joe Biden go up to New Hampshire and say that we should lock up Trump, which I don't really know if she called for, and I don't even know if Joe really remembers doing that stop, but hey, they decided to dust off old Bill Clinton, okay? Bill Clinton is going to be out there stumping for the candidate that a bunch of enraged feminists would rather vote for because the other guy's a degenerate, so they wheel out Bill Clinton? Okay. It's funny because you see these comparisons all the time. It's like, oh, Trump's too old to run. He's, he's 78. Just think how old he's going to be. How he's falling apart. He's not like how he used to be. No substantiated claims, but he's old. That's because that's what they used to say and tried to defend Joe Biden on before he got removed and taken off the ballot. But compare and contrast that with Kamala just turning 60, which by no means is old. But then you've got crusty old Slick Willie out here and he's actually younger than Trump, which is wild to look at, but he is nowhere near as youthful as the orange man and positioning himself as nowhere nearing being as coherent as Trump because I don't know what the blue hell, what the strategy is on this one, because this is kind of crazy. Bill Clinton calls Arizona GOP Senate candidate Carrie Lake physically attractive and Kamala Harris extremely vulnerable. Are you out there stumping for Trump? Like, is this one of those backhanded attempts to try to ensure that your daughter is the first female president and not Kamala? Like, what, what are you doing, Bill? Former president Bill Clinton complimented Arizona Republican Senate candidate Carrie Lake's looks while describing Vice President Kamala Harris is extremely vulnerable during campaign stops in a swing state Wednesday. Clinton, 78, was commenting on the race between Lake and yes, Representative Ruben Gallego, which it's kind of weird, right? Because there are some pretty consequential down ballot elections going on right now, and the way that those are being reported and looked at, it's um it's interesting. I'll be paying attention to the Arizona Senate election, but Carrie Lake according to the polls, he's not doing very well, which I find very strange because Ruben Gallego used to be in charge of the election apparatus uh, in Arizona during a time of mm, much, much confusion, uh, much obfuscation, uh, specifically in 2020, 2022, 2018 as well, all during times when certain elections were held up and may or may not have been the test runs for what would end up happening in the later half of his career controlling certain results in Maricopa County. But I digress. Comparing it to Harris's contest against former President Donald Trump when he made the bizarre remark, oh, this is a beautiful microcosm of a campaign that Kamala Harris is running for president. Okay, you got a person, Gallego, who grew up under uh, sometimes challenging circumstances, who made something of his life running against someone who, who's physically attractive but believes that politics is a performance art. Yo, that's even weirder when he put it in context. He because he's also calling Trump hot? Like, Bill, calm down. I understand it's tough and it's probably a dry spot that you're going through right now, you know, having so much time at home with Hill. But but what, what are you doing, dude? Like, what? Okay. Clinton then compared Lake to Republican vice president can er, presidential candidate J.D. Vance, okay, arguing that both are submissive to Trump, okay, but made an unfortunate stumble over the word prostrate. Oh, no. Oh, no. Bill really does. Uh, uh, well, okay, at least he's being consistent here. About the only Democrat in a very long time that has been, you know, a well-written character during this campaign. Like, J like J.D. Vance. Now, she has, to, she has to be prostrate before the master. What? No, it's... 
almost like you've got two of the most ardent adherents to the new wave of republicanism that's out there, that's actually popular. Uh, two of the more populist candidates, if you will. I would say America first, but you take a look at a lot of their simping and um, there's a certain country, state, occupied area in the Middle East that ever gets brought up. Oh boy, you know, it ends up rocketing to the front of their mind when they talk about it. But anyways, yeah, like the 55-year-old former television and news anchor and would-be governor of Arizona, if things got counted properly, uh, rep er, yeah, responded to Clinton's compliment at a rally Thursday in reference to the Monica Lewinsky yes of course scandal which again you put Bill Clinton out there on the road and you try to say that oh the Republicans this would be the Democrats talking point oh the Republicans oh they're running a 36 time convicted felon oh they're running a guy who has so many different scandals on his name and so many different me too allegations on him oh but here wait next speaker Bill Clinton I mean come on man like we understand that they have no self awareness but that no, really? No self-awareness? Okay. Uh, well, at a different Harris campaign event to the Grand Canyon state, Clinton argued that the GOP attacks against Vice President have left her extremely vulnerable. Which, okay. I guess Bill has also been in the sauce, and I guess he's speaking some truth here. Uh, the former president, er, president uh, explained that there was only a sliver of voters that have yet to make up their minds about which presidential candidate to support. I actually agree with him on this one. Uh, that they think of Harris lar largely depends on, on what they think of President Biden. But she's extremely vulnerable. More vulnerable than she deserves to be though crazy, uh, through crazy attacks. They've been thinking, the Republicans, all this time. How do we go on the attack? Well, we just let her talk. Then we also let her surrogates do the talking at this point in time because, holy crap, you can't do any more damage than, than what Bill did, okay? Or what Samuel L. Jack... They brought out Mace Windu, okay? They finally found him after he got flung out of the window after he got unlimited power by the Emperor all those years back. And they, they brought him out, and I'm sure he said, you know, we can't let this motherfucking guy get back in the MF White House. I'm sure he did all of his, you know, song and dance that's up there. I think he's one of the most overrated actors of all time. He's been a meme more than a consistent force that his supposed legendary status would afford him, but he's nowhere as cringy as Mark Hamill, which, bro, okay, like, we've seen some really bad cases of TDS. Like, Robert De Niro, personally, you know, it's kind of crazy, right? Because I can go ahead and rank, like, my top five favorite actors, and in the top three... Robert De Niro and he's about the only guy that I can put in contention with Mark Hamill as having the worst case of TDS. I can separate the art from the artist, okay? Because if I put on Godfather 2 or Goodfellas, I see no raging bull, I see Bob up there on the screen and I'm not immediately thinking, I want to punch him in the face. I see his vacuous airhead who's incredibly talented. But Mark Hamill, I mean, you're really pushing it with this one. Like, you're really pushing it with this one to celebrate Carrie Fisher's birthday, who regrettably she passed in 2017. Okay, he comes out and uses this as an opportunity to bash Trump? Like, what are you doing? For those wondering how she would vote in this election, oh, uh, nobody nobody was wondering. N nobody was m wondering, Mark, except for you. One of my last, the many arguments arguments we had was who hated the orange atrocity more after half an hour we had to agree to disagree why do you have to be like that you're really really getting close to accomplishing the impossible by making people think that you know perhaps disney jj abrams and ryan johnson were on the right thing by a sidelining you and then turning luke skywalker into a joke to better reflect the actor portraying him in the sequel trilogy. Normally when it comes to celebrities, and I've said this time and time again, or hell, even surrogates out there on the campaign trail, is anybody really gonna change the mind or opinions of people that are out there? Like if your favorite actor or athlete comes out in support of a political candidate, is that really gonna sway you? Probably not, and at least I don't think so. I don't think it adds all that much. It might change a few minds that are out there. I won't diminish that, other than Providing some good talking points, maybe a little bit of cringe, perhaps a little bit of introspection could be offered. Uh, Zachary Levi recently, uh, he had a viral clip deriding the view as being deris or divisive and their recontextualization of Hollywood, specifically Whoopi Goldberg, saying that uh, Hollywood has always been a right-wing town, which is so mind-numbingly dumb, I don't even know where to begin on that one, but he definitely put her in her place and managed to work that in to a nice common-sense message that... 
open-minded people that are now opening their eyes and taking a look around see just how far gone so many people are in comparison to everyday people living their life that's a more helpful cultural conversation that zachary's evoking and you like to see that and then something else that you like to see every once in a while is just a good old-fashioned jab which uh, is exactly what you got from mel gibson who if again to bring up my top five favorite actors list Mel Gibson? I'm pretty sure he's up there. If I really had to think about it, okay, like, growing up, i seen The Patriot an awful lot, a Lethal Weapon, the trilogy, and then that weird fourth one that came out, that's a, that's a strange one. But he's one of the best to do it. And if it wasn't for a couple of weird little hiccups in the early 2000s, I think a lot of other people would honestly and earnestly put him up there on the pantheon of Hollywood greats, because there's very few people that are out there that have the stage presence, the talent, and the versatility that Mel Gibson offers. I just uh, couldn't get over a couple of drunken irades against Hollywood producers and maybe a couple of poorly worded voicemails that he would leave for his uh, ex-wife. Oh, but we can let bygones be bygones, because Mel is still going to be Mel at the end of the day. And his off-the-cuff Knock on Kamala Harris, I mean, he's the best for a reason. Mel Gibson maligns Kamala Harris as having the IQ of a fence post. Oh my god, why? I gotta be so cool all the time, Mel. Just a few days ago, Andrew Garfield praised his Hacksaw Ridge director, Mel Gibson, for a beautiful healing with himself. The controversial Oscar winner has done over the years, based on comments Gibson made today at LAX about Vice President, uh, Vice President of the United States, the We Live In Time actor might want to reconsider his perspective oh the uh, this is this is the best that the mass media can do parrot the exact same strategy kamala harris has trying to passive aggressively leverage the opinions of others to cloud yours about somebody else Ugh. Uh, caught in an airport by tmz cameras gibson said kamala harris has the iq of a fence post i mean if you've been paying attention to any of her interviews recently i think you could easily come to that conclusion as well before the trucker hat wearing braveheart director actor declared he was voting for donald trump to get back in the white house gibson added that it ain't good if the current vp won the very close election over trump which is actually starting to widen now as the days draw nearer to said election miserable track record appalling track record no policies to speak of now i've got 85 pages on my website that you can check out at kamalaharris.com <laughs> gibson proclaimed of Harris, as you can see below. Yeah, we can't see it there, because TMZ is the big gay. It was just Mel walking through a terminal at LAX, just off the cuff being funnier than, more honest than just about anybody else in Hollywood. A deadline reached out to Gibson's reps for a statement on the actor's words about Harris, but we've heard nothing back. Yeah, exactly, and get used to that type of stuff, because I kind of think, okay, like there's going to be some spurging out that's going to happen in November, but kind of think, as long as everybody remembers to go and vote on the 5th, just, just do that, just go vote. We're going to be in for a very favorable outcome on the day all things seem to be pointing in that direction the fact that people are more willing to voice their support of said candidate more willing to step out of the shadows and or the cringe supporters of the establishment side just further entrench themselves in their eye-rolling positions yeah we're gonna see a lot more base takes we're gonna see a bunch of people come out and just n not even go full-throated mega not slap on the red cap not fly a Trump flag, but just honest people speaking truth, which is, that's what I want, man. I'm not here to say, well, it's going to be a return to normalcy. The pendulum's going to swing back in the other direction because that has never happened before. Heading into a new age with a little bit of a course correction and there might be a bumpy transition, but I think these next four years, it's, it's going to be really nice. It's going to be a lot of fun. And I think we're going to be getting a few more words besides retard back in the lexicon very, very soon. So with all that said, thank you all very much for the gift of your time. I've been Don Consuelo. I want you to follow your gut and get after it. Take care, everyone.